Hey guys, today man is back here and today with a bit of a different video for once. So obviously it's been a bit pro clubs, pro clubs, pro clubs, pro clubs. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. It's still football related. So also new kind of look thing going on. It's a, it's a bit different, you know, can't lie. But <laughs> let's just say the dreadlocks have been, I, I spent like three days, three days taking them out and I've combed out everything. And then, like, my head was just falling apart, and I was like, I just didn't have the energy to maintain it. <clears throat> so I was like, I might as well just start again. So I got a low trim, and it just didn't really look nice. So, hence the hat and the do rag. So, yeah, it's a little different, but <clears throat> it's, it's presentable, so that's all that matters. But, yeah, let's get into the video. So, today's video is going to be me doing a kind of a season review but i'm doing it in the form of a tier list so i've got a tier list of like so the tiers are like good decent average needs to be better next season and then needs selling and i'm just going to take united players and just put them in different points in the tier list and i'll give you my reasons as to why they're there um yeah so uh, without further ado, let's get into this. Right. Firstly, man like David De Gea, I'm gonna put you in. Ooh, it's a sticky one, you know. I think I'm gonna put him in average. I think um, the reason why I put him in average is because he's made a lot of mistakes this season, but he's also still kept a decent number of clean sheets. So I don't wanna. I wouldn't say he's been like need selling i wouldn't say he's been poor but i would say that he does kind of he does need to be a little bit better next season but it was kind of an average season like it was nothing out of the ordinary but it was definitely nothing special so that's why he's an average he does need to be better next season but not like um he was like outrageously poor do you know what i mean so uh sergio romero is going an average as well because He's had a pretty decent season. Uh, he's um, done everything he needed to do. Uh, obviously, what happened in the Sevilla game was a bit peak, but yeah, he just had an average season. Like there was nothing extraordinary. So, uh, Victor Lindelof, I'm gonna put him in decent. I think he's been quite good this season. Him and Maguire, they're kind of been the decent pairing out of the array of defenders that we have so yeah props to him he's done his bit but that's why he's indecent uh harry Maguire. harry Maguire is definitely indecent um i would say he's been good like in like the good tier but the reason why i put him in decent was because there's a lot of times where well not a lot but a few times where he's made some really awful errors that have led to led to goals this season and like that's the thing when he's good he's really really good but when he's um he makes a mistake like they're really really costly mistakes i just think that that's why he's not in good but he's been decent this season so i'll give him that next i'm going to go to luke shaw and this is gonna this is gonna bug a, a few people but i'm gonna put him on average Alright, the reason why I put him average before you start attacking me is because his assist numbers didn't even come close to double figures this season. Like, and that's what bothers me because, yeah, he's defensively stable, but going forward, he just, he, there's no cro crosses from deep, and all of his crosses are just, he just drills it in. And it's just a bit like, as a forward option, his, his attacking runs aren't. As intelligent, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, the thing with Luke Shaw is, yeah, <laughs> I look at Luke Shaw and I'm like, okay, he's good, but like, I feel like I could get better. Do you know what I mean? And I take Regulion, I can't say his name, Reg Regulon, that's it. I take Regulon and I, I take Luke Shaw and I'm like, okay, he's alright, but Regulon is so much better. The, the goal. That we conceded from the left hand side, uh, from Wambasaka's side basically. But it was Regulon was the one that was doing the madness down that left hand side that led to that goal. Like 
for me going forward, I think Luke Shaw's okay, but like he's nothing of the ordinary. He's no Andrew Robertson, he's no Fippin Ainsley Maitland Niles, he's no Saka. He just I I feel like there's more that I want from him that we're just not getting, but yeah. I remember Saka, I'm putting him in decent, like, he's had a really decent season. Uh, the only reason I didn't put it in good was kind of similar with Luke Shaw in the sense that defensively, they're, them two are quite quite solid. It's just attacking-wise is where it's been a bit of his weak link. In the sense that, well, obviously he's been at a team for the past two years where it's just defence-oriented and going forward is not as... Um, imp wasn't as important for him as it was now where he's on the ball a lot more and he needs to be able to put in those variant crosses like deep crosses, um, floaters, drills. He's really good at pullback and drill crosses. I've noticed that. There's times this season where he puts on a plate for some players and they just, they just don't score, which is a bit annoying. He can beat his man, but it just seems a bit like a confidence issue. Like he's worried about losing the ball and then his defensive responsibilities are kind of sacrificed. And I feel like he prioritises his defensive game over his attacking game. But I feel like next season, I think the main thing he has to improve on, obviously, is going forward. Same with Luke Shaw. Uh, but wan has had a better season than Luke Shaw, personally. For me, anyway. That's just me. Okay, that's just me. But, yeah. I feel like some of you are going to disagree with that. And because of the like severe game and it showed how... Well, without Luke Shaw, we were a bit vulnerable, but, you know, you can have your opinion, that's that's cool. Me, personally, I think wan has had a better season than Luke Shaw. But you're going to crucify me in the comments, you do that. You do that. I don't care. Um, next, we're going to go to Mason Greenwood. And I'm going to put him in decent. Okay, some, some people are going to be like, eh, why is he not in good? All right? This is his like first proper season, and at his age, like he's done what he needs to do in the sense that he taken on his man. He's shot and he's shot in decent areas. He's grabbed a lot of lot of goals. I think it was like eleven in the prem, and then like eighteen or so in all comps. I can't remember. <laughs> I need to research. Apologies, but yeah, he's been a decent option from the right wing. And um, he's really helped because it's obvious that a right winger is still needed. Uh, Daniel James wasn't exactly putting up the numbers. But Mason Greenwood's come in and pretty much showed him how, showed him how it's done, really. And, yeah, he's had a decent season. Uh, goal scoring wise yeah. Creative-wise, his assist is, like, he's had one assist this season. I just feel like next season he really needs to work on creating more chances rather than just being kind of an out-and-out scorer there's nothing wrong with being an out and out scorer but it's just not every game you're going to get into situations where you can create that half a yard and score or shoot and i feel like in the severe game that showed there was a lot of times where he was trying to create half a yard and instead of trying to play it he tried to shoot and he just needs to he's young in it so he just needs to work on being more aware of what's going on and just being more unselfish at times but his finishing this season is just mad. Like, it's just crazy. But, yeah, that's why I put him in decent. Just because of his creative side not being as big as his uh, finishing side. But, yeah. I mean, considering he's more of a striker than a right winger, he's done all right for himself. But, yeah. Um, I'm going to go to... Jesse Lingard and I'm going to put him it needs to be better next season the reason why I've said it needs to be better next season is purely because I feel like it's a bit harsh to kind of sell him based off the fact that he had a lot of like intense things going on off the pitch and that clearly affected his game on the pitch and although um, taking that away I still think there's a lot of stuff he does need to work on in terms of um, finishing and um yeah it's, it's pretty much finishing and creating chances really like you come in and you see jesse lang and i think oh yeah this guy's good at link up play okay that's not so bad oh he makes good runs and then you just see what bruno's done you're like yeah jesse lingard he hasn't really done as much do you know what i mean like i feel like there's more 
the 17-18 season showed that Jesse Lingard does have stuff to offer. It's whether he can produce that level of consistency. And he just hasn't really done that this season. But I feel like he needs one more chance. And then, if nothing, then, yeah. But he's a decent squad player to keep. So, that's why I would say he needs to be better next season. Alright, next we're going to take Fred. And I'm going to put him... <sighs> I want to put him in decent. I really want to, but oh, I'm gonna put him in average. Like he's had, he's had a really decent season in the first half of the season. Him and McTominay were doing all right, but it was nothing out of the ordinary again. Like I just, oh uh, man, it's just yeah. He's been all right, but I feel like there's still more. Like there's a reason why Matic came back into this team and kind of held down a place. Because Fred wasn't always putting in those performances. Like Matic was, is still consistently decent, and he's like pretty much a pensioner. Like he's he's thirty, he's thirty five or thirty six or something or thirty four, and he's still putting in more more consistent, high level performances than Fred. Even though um, Fred's a lot younger as well, but I think it's mainly because of Matic's experience and kind of. Fred's very erratic in the sense that he's always hunting for that ball and he just gets dragged so much. I just feel like he needs to have the right kind of defensive midfielder next to him because he's a bit he's he's just been a little bit erratic at times and that's the only reason why I'm not putting him in decent. But personally I think he's been okay and he does need to be better next season. He's got stuff to work on, but I'm sure he'll work on it. Alright, let's get into the good Anthony Martial and see this guy, man. See this guy, stone cold finisher. That's what he is. Like I actually just, I actually just love this guy. He works so hard off the ball, pressing. Um, his pressing game has definitely stepped up this season. His finishing is so much better. That goal against Bournemouth. Oh my gosh, I was screaming. It was top quality, and I'm just glad that. Uh, that he's finally getting the the players around him and the service from Bruno really helped towards the end of the season. And him and Rashford, the way they've been linking up, especially in the first half of the season, like we the fact that we were able to scrape sixth was ridiculous. Considering we had a midfield of Andreas, Fred and McTominay. And the fact that Rashford Martial was still able to get goals out of that midfield was it it it, it takes a lot of quality in you to be able to produce when you're surrounded by players that product product wise is is not as high level as it needs to be in the sense that Andreas, Fred, McTominay creative wise they weren't creating as much and yet Martial was still kind of feeding off scraps and still able to put in semi-decent performances however next season he does need to be more clinical especially those last two games it showed that his finishing still is like one or three or five steps off world class purely because of how he had like like we had so many chances and he just couldn't seem to find a corner in the last two games it was it was just weird but yeah he's had times like that this season but it's what it is can't dwell on it too much you know what i'm saying but yeah, he's been good this season. So I don't know why all the I I I can kind of actually know. I kind of understand why pundits think that United need a top quality striker, but I think Martial is that top quality striker. It's just we need to have a decent striker off the bench that can still score goals. Like Igalo's good, don't get me wrong, for some games, but he's not. He's just not Chicharito. He's not Berbatov. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, United take off Rooney and Berbatov and you'd be like, okay, we're still going to score. You take off Martial for Igalo, you don't really think, ah, oh, yes, we're going to score now, Igalo's on. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like United don't have that. And that's squad depth. That's it. That's what let us down this season. It wasn't the, it wasn't the, it wasn't so much the, the first team that was the issue. It was more of, we didn't really have any off the bench impact that was needed when the players that were starting weren't doing as much. Of course, yes, our first team does need improving as well in terms of like three or four players maybe added in. But in a sense, squad depth is what wins titles. First team wins matches, 
decent squad depth, wins titles, wins trophies, everything. So, yeah. And that's what cost us the season. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Alright, let's move on to Paul Pogba. Oh, it's a bit of a sticky one, you know. I really want to put him in average. But, because he has been injured for most of the season. So, that's a bit of a... I'm going to actually do some research on his stats. Because I want to see how good he was this season. Okay, that's off who scored. Um, this is a very sticky one. I'm going to put him in... Wait, what? Where the hell is my... Flip's sake. Alright, dear me God. I'm going to put him in average. Purely because uh, the numbers he put up wasn't of the ordinary. But at the same time, he was kind of starting as a, a deeper role. And... Um, for the second half of the season and he did his deeper role okay like he did create the odd chance he did get forward a bit when he could um but the first half of the season he was injured for most of it so that's probably why his numbers aren't anything exponential but he doesn't need to be better next season can't lie uh there's times where he just does a little bit too much for no reason but um as long as he keeps up with the deep lying playmaking ability as long as he keeps it at the high level and he keeps kind of creating chances for Martial and Rashford, then hopefully his numbers will be better next season. So, but yeah, for me, average season. I hate to say it, but I have to. So, next we've got Marcus Rashford. He's going in good. Uh, that was a really, uh, that was a really, uh, uh, that was a no-brainer really. Like, it's it's so weird seeing how kind of as a player he's kind of matured in the sense that he's worked a lot and in the second half of the season he worked so much on his creative kind of side like he was I was seeing him like just sit on the touchline and he would just get the ball and he would take one touch in and he would just ping it in side to Bruno at one point and he missed the chance but it's just little things like that like he's really worked on his creative side his link up play with the rest of the players and I like that his finishing as well has been decent this season, and yeah, overall he's had a pretty good season. So him and Martial are the reason. Excuse me. One of the main reasons why we are where we are basically. Um, needs to be better next season is Daniel James. Now it's no it's no word of a a lie that I don't really like Daniel James in the sense that doesn't really offer anything <laughs> just pace like I'm watching this guy as a winger trying to beat his man and he just cuts inside or he kick balls and run like he doesn't have skill move or skill set like I feel like the best wingers always have like a skill move or skill set if not whatever they do is efficient in terms of getting them that half a yard of space and then they end up producing something world class with it I am Robin and Messi are the perfect examples. They don't do anything outrageous to be their man. They just do it and then their end product is top notch. Daniel James's end products is just a bit flat. Like this I'm seeing this guy cut in and cross and it just doesn't I mean he put in that one cross against Liverpool though, so to be fair, everyone's saying he's a squad player, so but I feel like if he's coming off the bench, I need my off the bench players to at least contribute something. Like Chicharito off the bench contributed something. Jason Park off the bench contributed something. Darren Fletcher off the bench contributed something. Anderson off the bench contributed something. Nani off the bench contributed something. This guy, second half of the season, Niet. The first few games, the last, the like the rest. I think maybe a lot of people said that it was because of his father, um, his father passing, and maybe that was part of the reason why uh, his maybe his confidence got low, and maybe that's what's Im impacted his game. So, yeah, but I just feel like he's still young in it, so he's still got a lot to learn. But next season he has to be better. We can't afford to be having poor performances. Like the, I'm, I'm just grateful that we that Ole um allowed Greenwood to start starting, man, because Daniel James's contributions this season has just been minimal. So, but yeah, hopefully better next season. Um, 
Andreas Pereira is one of those players that I was like, at the beginning of the season, I was really hyped for, and afterwards, I just, like, I just don't think it's going to work out for him, and I think he just needs to be sold, because... His work rate's good. Uh, you can create a chance occasionally, but I see Andreas and then I just see Bruno. I'm like, Bruno just creates so much more than Andreas does, and that's why I just don't think he he'll, he he needs to go somewhere where he can start and realize like, okay, in order to keep this place, I really need to fight and be consistent. And he's just not been consistent this season, like at all. And I just. I just don't think he's a United player. I know people are like, oh, how you got Andreas on need selling and then Jesse Lingard on needs. There's a different reason though. Like Jesse Lingard kind of had off the pitch things affecting him. Andreas has just been poor, and that's all I can say really. Uh, all right, what's next? I'm gonna go Nemanja Matic and put him on decent. He's been a pretty decent player. Uh, he's come back in. I remember there was the first like half of the season where he barely played because McTominay was the one that kind of Ole kind of put his trust in, and then it, then McTominay kind of got injured. I think I think McTominay got injured. And Matic came in and fill in, and he's been pretty good, decent, mature performances after time and time and again. He is like an an uncle, like they call him Uncle Ma Uncle Matic. You can't you kind of see that in the sense that he's just. Um, he's composed, and what's, he knows what to do, knows how to read the game, his anticipation is that of a player that's 34, like he just reads the game well, so, and he's been valuable to us, and I hope we can find someone as good and will be even better than he is right now, so, hopefully McTominay can live up to that, fingers crossed, but, uh, yeah, decent season, yeah, I know, it's a bit controversial to say he's had a better season than Pogba, but Pogba's been injured for most this season, okay, so... Um, Eric Bailly, <laughs> I'm going to just put him on average, really because he, he's barely played this season, So, but when he's played he's been alright, he's made a few mistakes, he looked very very shaky in the um, Chelsea game when it came to playing out the back, can't lie, so he needs to work on that, uh, but he when he does like have time on the ball, he, he really does know how to pick out a pass, uh, same with Maguire as well. But, um, yeah, he's been okay. Um, Diogo Dallo, I'm putting him on needs to be better next season because I still think he just didn't really get a chance to kind of prove himself this season. Uh, there was times this season where I was like, okay, why is he not playing? Okay, why is he not playing? Okay, why is he not playing? Okay, he's playing. Why is he not playing? And I'm just like, if wan has not been good this season, he should be dropped and play Diogo Dallo. He should be given a chance. That, that should should be how it works in the sense that if a player's not been playing well for a run of games he does need to be dropped and then Diego Dalla should have been given more of a chance but yeah that's why I don't want him to be sold yet because I still think he's got more to prove but his crossing is a decent attribute I feel like he's got more in his locker to showcase than he has been given the chance to so yeah um Juan Mata I don't know, you know. I'm just gonna put him on needs to be better next season. Like he's a squad player, and uh, off the bench, uh, when he's played, he's been okay at times, but nothing really special. Like his productivity has, uh, it's it's just not as good as Bruno. It's weird. Like I see Bruno, and then I compare it to the rest of the players. I'm like, why is this guy so much better than everyone? All our other kind of midfield options, except for Pogba, maybe. But, yeah, I just feel like Mata needs to work on a few things. He is a bit old. It's probably what it is. Maybe his age. But, um, yeah, personally, I think maybe he should be sold. Actually, yeah, I'm going to put him in needs to be sold. <laughs> Get a better squad player in. Someone a bit younger. Uh, promote, maybe. I can't say his name. I think it's like Majibil or something. This is his picture. But, yeah, this guy should get promoted. And maybe play him on the, have him on the bench a bit more, give him more of a chance, and just sell Matt already. Um, Axel Twenby Twenzy he barely played, so I'm just not gonna rank him. Uh, 
Phil Jones, yeah, that one's <laughs> need to be sold. I'm not going to discuss that one. We both know he needs to be sold. Marcus Rojo, I'm probably going to say on need to be sold. I think he's an okay player, but maybe kept for squad depth. But I just can't really see him getting into the team when we have Smalling coming back. Like uh, Maguire, Lindelof, Smalling, Baez. I think it's okay. Uh, maybe a dip. Maybe sell um buy and then get in another centre back or just keep buy, but personally I think keep buy. But those are the four centre backs that I feel we need. Maybe bring an extra one, uh, someone with a bit more pace to accommodate Maguire. But yeah, I don't think Marcus Rojo has a place here anymore. Uh, he's barely been given a chance. Similar with Diogo Dallo, but yeah, so I'm not really gonna judge him too much. Um, James Garner. He's been all right this season when he's played. I feel like it was the similar case with um, with Diogo Dallo in the sense that he should be played more this season. <laughs> like he has stuff to offer. It's clear when you watch um, the clips of him in the academy that this guy's got something to offer this club. Same with uh, Daniel Levitt. I think I said his name right. If I didn't, I apologize. Levitt. They they need to play more. That's why I put him on average. I'm not really gonna. You just need to be play more, played more. Um, what's next? Timmy Fossu Mentor. Ugh. I want to sell him, but at the same time, he's barely played the season, so I'm not going to rank him. Alright, lastly, uh, we'll talk about Tom Scott McTominay and... Um, what's his name? And... Uh, Scott McTominay and... Um, what's his name? Bruno Fernandez. Uh, ooh, this is a bit of a tricky one, you know. I'm gonna put him in average. He's been all right. Uh, he's still he's not in the Manny Matic though. But first half of the season was good. Second half of the season he didn't really play that much. I think it was purely to injury. So I'll put him in uh, average. I think one thing I like actually no, I'm putting him in decent. <laughs> I'm putting him in decent. Yeah, Scott McTominay better than Pogba this season. Bit of a controversial one, but. I think it's one of those things in the sense that he's really kind of grown into his role a little bit in the sense there was like there was a really good patch where he was just playing really well, especially against Arsenal. And um one thing when you look at how he was when he first came into the team and how he is now, like there is a little bit of growth. There was a time where he would never in his life play forward passes. <laughs> Ever. And then now he's he's starting to switch to play a bit more. Uh he is uh, attempting a lot more forward passes, which is very key when you're a DM, because uh, you you essentially start the attacks, and if you're just playing it sideways and not moving the ball quick enough, then... But Scott McTominay, he's, he's really grown into his role as a DM, and uh, the injury that he suffered early in the season was a bit unfortunate, but when he's, be when he's played, he's been okay. So, looking forward to seeing how he'll be next season. Uh... Axel Twanzibi has been injured for most of the season, so I'm just not going to rank him. Gomez isn't here. Ashley Young isn't here. Tatif Chong isn't here. He needed that loan, so I'm glad he's been loaned out. Uh, Lee Grant, he just he's just here, like he does. <laughs> he doesn't play. He's just I think he's just another leader in the dressing room. But um, if we're looking to offload players for money to help uh, afford for, if we're looking to sell players to kind of free up the wage gap and be able to invest in other areas of the squad probably Lee Grant should go but yeah that's just me um whew. lastly Bruno Fernandes I think when this guy first came I was like finally because <laughs> I was also a little bit worried though that he wouldn't put up decent numbers, but he's come in and he's putting decent numbers. I don't care if they're penalties. Penalties are still very hard to score, in the sense that you ha it takes a lot of composure and to be able to score a penalty. Not that not just anyone has. So his assists decent, but I think it's also what he brings on in the game. Like he's always trying to pick out players. Forward passes is his like his number one thing. He's always looking forward, which I love, man. It's none of this Andreas Pereira, Jesse Lingard sideways recycle possession. No, this guy is looking to pick out a run every single time. Although he does lose the ball a lot, which is why certain men have compared him to Jesse Lingard and Pereira. But 
He's not on their level, man. He's so much higher. He's better. He's been decent this season, and he's but he's he's in good. He's going in good. Like he would go in good. Uh, in terms of, I like how on the pitch he's also kind of instructing players. Like there's mi- there's loads of times where he's screaming at Wan Bissaka to get out, push wide. Uh, he's screaming for the ball always, and he 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 brings such a winning mentality into the side. Like he wants to win every single game, and if he's not getting the best, he'll he will let the other players know. And and I like that, and I think more players need to be like that. And yeah, obviously next season for him stuff to him to improve. He needs to kind of. Just take a bit more time and realise that if the forward pass ain't on, it ain't on. And doesn't need to always force it. And um, But he also needs to work on his passing accuracy in the sense that when he sees a forward pass, he's always picking it out rather than it gets intercepted by the defender. Because he's tried to uh, play it a, a bit more smart, smartly than he needed to. So, yeah. But Bruno Fernandes goes in good because... His numbers and his contributions to this team has been top quality, really. And, yeah, so this is my controversial tier list. The fact that Scott McTominay is ranked by Pogba just doesn't sit right with me. I feel like Paul Pogba should be in higher, but he's been injured for most of the... I should have done an injured section, and that's why I kept them. But, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And, uh, yeah, that's my little tier list slash season review. Be sure to subscribe for more football and gaming related content and I shall see you guys very very soon.